Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are looking at Spine 3.7. Now, Spine is one of those packages I've covered a couple of times already on this channel, so I'm not going to go into a huge amount of depth. If you are interested in learning more, I will put one or two of those links down below. So if you want to learn more about Spine, I've definitely got you covered there. So this 3.7 release is mostly what we're going to focus on, but for those of you that have never heard of Spine, here is a quick overview. In fact, this here is Spine, and what it allows you to do is basically animate 2D drawings. What you do is you cut your character up into various different pieces. Like you can see here, uh, the legs, the arms, and all that have been split out. And then you can use bones, mesh, mesh deformation, etc., to then pose and create animations for your character. Like so. Oops, I keep moving off the bone. Like so. So then working on these together, you can create and define custom animations across the timeline. And then you can take and export those animations out. And there are various different runtimes that plug directly into game engines, allowing you to take advantage of your advanced animation capabilities in your game engine of choice. Or you can just straight out export as a sprite sheet and use it in any game engine whatsoever. You just won't get the advanced functionality that comes from the spine. So that in a nutshell is Spine. Now Spine has always had a special place in my heart. It is the first of these um, bone-based animation 2D systems out there that I use. It's also powered by LibGDX, a library that I have a long history with. So Spine is definitely a, probably one of my favorites in this category, but keep in mind there are other options out there. You've got uh, Creature from Kestrel Moon, you've got um, Dragon Bones, you've got Spriter, and you've probably got three or four others that I'm not remembering off the top of my head. But like I said, Spine has always kind of had a special place in my heart. So what is in this 3.7 release? Well, the biggest new feature is definitely audio. Now keep in mind, I'm gonna be somewhat skimming over these features. You can come in here for the full out change logs. There is a lot more things that changed in the editor and the runtime. I'm just not gonna get into that nitty gritty level of detail in this video. But audio support is definitely a big one. So now what you can do is bring audio files in as part of your timeline, play them as an event, and actually hear audio as part of your animation. Obviously invaluable if you're trying to sync your animation against time. So for example, if you had a gunshot and a recoil sound in it and you wanted to match that animation to your animation, well, you can now bring those files in as either waveform MP3 or AUG Vorbis file formats, create them as an event in your timeline and have it play and you can then synchronize to it um, with your animation. So obviously something that people have been asking for for a long time. They've also said we've updated our export system to handle audio. When you export your animations to video, Spine will also include the audio. So so if you're creating an animation that's video animation with audio in it, you will now get the audio exported out. And I don't know um, if, yeah, so this is an editor only feature. So those are not going to export out to the runtimes for like Cocos or Unreal Engine or anything like that. You'll still need to synchronize the audio in your game engine of choice. Uh, they also added stretchy, compressed, and uniform inverse kinematics to their bones. So um, Spine supports one and two bone inverse kinematic constraints that keep one or two bones pointed at each um, at another target bone. However, these constraints used to be rigid. The bone in the IK chain did not automatically stretch or compress. In 3.7, we have added additional settings to the IK constraints, specifically compress, stretch, um, and so on. So the stretch option is available for one and two bone IK constraints. When enabled, all bones in the IK chain will stretch as needed to touch the target bone. However, the bones will not get compressed when the distance of the target bone is smaller than the original bone length. For one bone IK, the compressed setting will cause the compression of a constrained bone for when the distance of the target bone is smaller than the constrained bone's length. Both compress and stretch can be keyframed over time. Uh, they added mesh white strip, uh, white space stripping. This is kind of cool. So when you export out to like a texture packer, uh, it can automatically strip away the non-pixel dead portions of your image if they exist. So if you have an image that you know isn't just full of pixel data, it has some white space on either end, um, you can actually have it automatically stripped out as part of the export. Uh, speaking of export, they've done a revamping on the export options in 3.7. They completely revamped our export uh, dialogues. One of the areas that got a lot of love was the GIF exporter. So you see here, they've uh, done a lot of work to contain, uh, preserve colors of animation. One of the things about GIF is it's ideal to concern, uh, it uses a fixed color table of 256 or is it 240? Anyways, you've got a constrained palette when dealing with animation. GIFs. Um, 
So colors are carefully chosen, not just when each frame, but also temporarily across frames to prevent flickering of animation. Also expose main controls in the export settings so you can find the best parameter for your specific animation to create the best GIFs possible. One of those things about animated GIFs or GIFs is that they can be outrageously huge. So this is one of those things where these tweaking and you know, get the best result versus file size, playback size there. They also added support for a ping. Now a ping is basically GIF or animated ping is kind of a, a GIF 2.0 based on the ping format. GIF is kind of a really crap format that's encumbered by patents and it, it mostly exists because of legacy reasons. Well, there's a ping, which is not copyright infringement. Like there's no copy sort of patent problems or anything like that on it. Um, but it is not universally, universally supported by all browsers. Basically all modern browsers that are not made by Microsoft are supported. And Microsoft is basically getting rid of Microsoft Edge. So in time, a ping should be, you know, as useful as they get, but they added support for that as well. Well, they also added Adobe PSD file system, um, and that gives your animations will be split across separate layers. Um, and then we've got a preview button. You click the preview button, and you actually get an exact shot of what you are going to see in your end result. This is literally the end result, so if there's any artifacting or weirdness in it, um, you can then see that directly in the preview. On top, there's also a range and a crop setting, so you can say, I want to export from frame 10 to 17, or you can crop it down in size, um, specify the dimensions of your export when exporting out. There is the pixel grid rendering. This is for people that are working in that chunky art style. Uh, spying will render your pixel art at one to one ratio and then scale up so that your results look exactly like you want them to. It will not get rid of those nice um, chunky edges and give you nice smoothness as a result. So it should be a very um, pixel art friendly workflow as a result. Uh, you got the ability to combine skins. Skins can be thought of these top level layers. This is where your visual aspect of your character is coming from. So by mixing things together, you can create this, you know, kind of create a character type thing. So now we've added a new skins view. All of the available skins are shown on top with a pin to each one. At the bottom is a list of the currently pins. So you can basically mix and match out what you want to pin to make this particular character. Uh, so you can swap in and out and you'll see the results on the fly like there. They added type to search. Uh, they added skin duplication, and this kind of goes with the same thing for skin. So you can see here in this animated example, they've got a fully defined character named Goblin. And if, when there's another one that has a completely different skin or a different top level set of pixels, but it uses the same underlying uh, hierarchy of bones. So what you can do with skin duplication is basically create a duplicate. So you see here, they're doing Goblin Girl, and then you watch here, all of the bones will then be updated and named in this duplicate version to the new version. So if you're creating a spin-off of basically one character that uses the exact same underlying uh, skeleton, or at least starts with it, you can quick, quickly rename and link and create a second version of it as a result of this new functionality. Added vertex copy and paste, command line improvements, uh, runtime improvement. Now runtime, as I mentioned earlier, are the ability that allows you to run your um, spine games inside of various different game engines. Um, so they added some things like uh, the way animation states are called uh, for looped and zero duration animations. Flip X, flip Y, and skeleton have been renamed scale X and scale Y. Uh, mix pose was renamed to mixed blend. Uh, additive blending was added at, this is kind of cool. So basically what you can do is have like an animation, a facial animation of angry and sad and happy, and you can blend them for different percentages between to do an additive blend between those different um, facial expressions. So this is kind of cool functionality. Um, support for stretchy. And then again, we had the audio events that we saw earlier on. Um, so you can have the events, but again, exported audio is still not a thing. So you're still gonna have to deal with that in your engine of choice. And then Spine CPP. Now, until now, the Spine runtime for game engines such as uh, Cocos Creator, Unreal Engine, SFML, and the various different C games were based on um, Spine C, which is based off of C89. There is a new runtime out there, Spine CPP, which is based off C++. Now, I don't know which version of C++. I'm assuming either C++ 11 or 14. And I, I'm, is, yeah, actually, I'm, I'm kind of shocked they don't tell us here. Uh, but basically, the code base has moved from C to C++ and is now the default for uh, Unreal Engine and Cocos Creator runtimes. Uh, now, the old runtime is still available in the 3.7C branch. So that is that. Um, so if you are running on one of those game engines and you are noticing anomalies, do be aware that there is a new runtime and the old runtime is still out there. Uh, going forward, they will be maintaining both the C and the C++ runtimes in the 3.7 branch. And uh, however, we will not be backporting Unreal Engine and Cocos 2DX runtimes past this point. So going forward, if you use one of those two game engines, you're ultimately going to be running on the um, CPP backend. 
uh, new workshops, uh, training material is now available at a number of courses around the world, and some examples. And then there's one other thing here that I actually missed, so I'm going to do a twofer in this news report. Back just before Christmas, uh, they released the Spine Web Player. Uh, so you see, this is actually a runtime, a plugin that you can run your animations directly inside your website or blog. Um, so if you have a portfolio of spine animations and you want to show them off exactly as they are, um, there is a new runtime. There is the code required to run your particular thing, and there is a document on actually using this guy. I just missed that at the end of last year, so I thought I'd throw it on the end of this video. I'll also toss the link to that article along with this article down below. And that's it. Uh, that is uh, Spine 3.7. Some interesting stuff in there, quite of an improvement. Now, I've always loved the software. The user interface is very clean. What it does is very clean. And I should point out at this point in time, it is commercial software, and it is the second most expensive of the options out there, I think. Um, so if you are interested in grabbing it, they have a trial available, and just head on over to esotericsoftware.com. You can buy a try now. And then when it comes to pricing, they've got three different tiers. There's Essential at $69, Professional at uh, $299. Uh, these two tiers both apply if you make less than a half a million bucks a year. You make more than a half a million dollars a year, you need the Enterprise version. Um, the big difference between Pro and Essential is um, the the lack of weighted mesh clipping, IK constraints, uh, freeform deformation. So you can get your bone animation and so on, but you don't get the free and handy mesh deformations and the, the constraints that you get. And interestingly enough, you also don't get audio in Essential. So that is it. That is uh, Spine uh, from Esoteric Software. Version 3.7 was just released. Let me know what you think. Are you using one of these bone-based animation softwares? And if so, which one? Are you using Spine or are you using something else like Creature or Sprite or... or um, Dragon Bones or the one that I'm forgetting and people are going to remind me of in the comments down below. Let me know which one you're using. Does um, Spine look pretty cool to you or is this whole idea of dynamic IK-based animations in 2D just not your thing? Let me know. Talk to you all later. Goodbye.